Hi, Premama. I'm Kaylee, host of the channel. We're excited to have Premama product expert Christy Dijkema on our channel. She'll walk through the supplement panel of each of our trying to conceive products, as well as discussing why each of the specific nutrients are important. Christy has a master's in human health and nutritional science and an undergrad degree in nutraceutical science. This workshop took place in our free Trying to Conceive Facebook community, linked in the description below. Join us in the group for future workshops and a community of women supporting each other on our journeys to motherhood. All right, let's get to it. So hi, my name is Christy. I'm from the University of Guelph. I'm a master's student in human health and nutritional sciences. And I did an undergrad at the same university for um, NANS, which stands for Nutrition and Nutraceutical Sciences. So I found Premama while I was working on a major project. Uh, it was a hypothetical product development project where we worked on creating a product that would help people switch off birth control. And due to Premama's birth control cleanse, I decided to message them and see if we could work together. And so I am doing an internship with them this summer, which is really exciting. Um, so to go back to my undergrad and my master's, what I specifically study is in-depth nutri nutrition and nutraceuticals, which are often used in supplements and stuff like at Premama, um, to improve our overall health. And so I studied things like biochem and cellular reactions and overall systemic function. And um, yeah, it was very interesting and it helped me to learn in depth about the body. And it was very, it's a very specific undergrad and masters. And we go over things also like pharmacology and nutraceuticals. So it's really great. Um, and I think I'm gonna just dive into talking about the products now. So I'll start sharing my screen. In just one second. Awesome. So we're going to start off with the birth control cleanse. So this is a berry flavored drink that helps with PMS and your body's transition off of birth control. It's just a packet that you can open up, add to water or whatever you would like. Um, so I'm just going to start off looking at the nutrient table. And I first want to take a look at Chasta Berry, or also known as Vitex. Um, this is an amazing bioactive that is included in this product that I full heartedly support. So what is Chasta Berry? So to start off, Chast, uh, the Chasta Berry tree is kind of a shrub that produces these purple flowers and white berries. And these berries and flowers in the shrub in general has been used to help um, regulate endocrine, which is hormones, and it, to achieve many different things. The way it works, it decreases prolactin uh, production. This is really important when talking about PMS symptoms because high levels of prolactin can cause a lot of um, the symptoms that you feel when you're coming uh, approaching your period or during your period, like breast tenderness. So prolactin also inhibits progesterone. So when you decrease prolactin production, you increase progesterone production naturally. So why is this important? So when, when you're talking specifically on birth control, about birth control and coming off of birth control, when you're on birth control, you're taking synthetic forms of progesterone and estrogen. So this estrogen to talk specifically about the estrogen, it is a synthetic form that has a longer half-life. What this means, it stays in your body for a very long period of time. So it takes a long time to get out of your body. And it has a way longer half-life than our natural estrogen or endogenous estrogen. And progesterone and estrogen have this balance. So when you're taking birth control and coming off, it really disrupts this balance because you have so much excess estrogen and not enough progesterone to match. Um, so that's why you want to increase progesterone when you're coming off birth control, which is interesting though, because the synthetic 
progesterone that you take does not act the same as the synthetic estrogen. Mm -hmm. It just affects your body's ability to produce its own progesterone. So when you come off of birth control, typically your body doesn't produce enough progesterone on its own, even mm -hmm. without that whole factor of this estrogen taking longer to clear out of your body. And when talking about progesterone being imbalanced with estrogen, this is where you get a lot of your PMS symptoms. So like cramps, um, mental fatigue, bad mood, all that kind of stuff is typically caused by low progesterone in your luteal phase, which is your phase after ovulation. So also when talking about fertility um, amongst women is low progesterone in the luteal phase is a very common problem. So when you take chastaberry and it decreases prolactin, uh, which will cause an increase in progesterone, it could really help your ability to ovulate and have a proper period. So that's re something really important to consider when thinking about this birth control cleanse. It's not necessarily just for coming off birth control. It's for anyone who's dealing with PMS, um, very severe PMS, or fertility problems especially if it's linked to poor ovulation. So back to the nutrient table, we're going to talk about all of these other fun ingredients that we have here, these essential nutrients. So first off, we have vitamin C. So vitamin C is really great. It actually helps improve progesterone metabolism. Vitamin C is used in the metabolism of our hormones, specifically estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So, but it specifically improves progesterone the most. And it has been used in studies to deal with women even without taking um, birth control who are dealing with low progesterone in the luteal phase, and it helps improve their progesterone status and the ratio between estrogen and progesterone, which is so important. Um, next, we have vitamin E. This is really important when coming off birth control. Because when you're on birth control, your liver is going through overload. It's getting a little bit more stressed out than it usually does because what your liver does is process basically everything that comes into your body, specifically hormones, because they're fat soluble and the liver is really in charge with trying to clear out all of those fat soluble toxins and ingredients and stuff like that. So your liver is getting a little bit stressed and vitamin E really helps improve liver function um, and clearance and improving liver function is also important, um, let alone from the fact that it just took a beating, um, but because it'll help with getting rid of the excess estrogen, right? So we want to get that out of our body. So the liver will help do that. And that's why we have vitamin E. So next we have magnesium. Magnesium and selenium are very specific for this product because when you're taking birth control, your magnesium and uh, selenium status gets depleted. So um, women who are typically taking this are deficient in magnesium and selenium. When talking specifically about magnesium, it is involved in like over 300 biological functions. So it's super important. Um, and ex especially when talking about PMS, because it also helps with increased magnesium intake can help with muscle cramps and stuff like that because it's a relaxant. And also magnesium has been linked to improve anxiety and stuff like that. So it's a really important ingredient to have in this product. Next, we have selenium. Selenium is important because of the fact that it's depleted after birth control, but it is a major player in thyroid health. So typically we talk about iodine when we talk about thyroid health, which is really important um, because iodine helps create our T4 and T3, which are hormones produced by our thyroid, which affects things like metabolism. But another key, key player is selenium. And thyroid health is really important is because it's part of the HBA axis. So when talking about your hormones, you've got to remember they're not alone sitting by themselves they're all connected so they communicate with each other the point of hormones is for help us communicate with our whole body so when one is off the other one will be off and it really affects how the body works as a system so you want to make sure that all your glands are at a really great status including the thyroid um, which is really negatively affected when taking birth control 
Um, so we're going to move on to the next supplement. Um, I'm going to stop to share for a second to see if I have any questions and to remind you that I'm here. <laughs> awesome. Okay. And then... So next we're going to talk fertility for support for her. Um, so this is a flavorless uh, drink packet that can be easily added to any drink to aid fertility. So we're going to first start off with myo-inositol. So this is a really cool ingredient. And before I start talking about this ingredient, I'm going to talk about um, something called PCOS. This is polycystic ovarian syndrome. It actually affects one in 10 women and not all women know that they're affected by PCOS. And it is also the most common cause for infertility among women. This is because there is a whole bunch of problems when it comes to ovulation and herism, which is um, uh, increased body hair or hair, facial hair in women. Um, and stuff like that. And one of the main players in PCOS symptoms and pathology is insulin resistance. So the way this works is our ovaries always remain insulin sensitive, but our bodies can become insulin resistant. And just as a refresher, in case anyone doesn't know, insulin is something that affects your blood sugar. So when you have type 2 diabetes, you have insulin resistance. And usually it's called insulin resistance the stage before type 2 diabetes. So insulin resistance increases the amount of uh, insulin that our body produces. and But our ovaries remain sensitive. So this affects other hormones that our um, ovaries control and affect, which is progesterone, estrogen, FSH, and LH. So FSH and LH are superiorly uh, produced from your anterior pituitary gland, which controls a lot of the sex hormones other than your gonads, um, which is things like ovaries for women and testicles for men. And so when you affect your FSH and LH production, you're affecting the maturation of your egg or development of your egg. So when you are insulin resistant, but your ovaries remain insulin sensitive, you increase your FSH production and you screw up that FSH and LH balance. So what this causes is your egg to develop only half and because FSH controls basically one half of the egg and LH controls the other half. So your eggs half develop and then decay, so you don't ovulate. And it causes a lot of other hormone problems. One way to solve this is to improve your insulin sensitivity. So um, this is where myo-inositol comes in. It helps improve insulin sensitivity. It also is as effective as metformin, which I don't know if you guys have heard of before, but is usually the primary um, pharmaceutical prescribed to people with insulin resistance. So uh, myo-inositol is a very great thing to have in this product, especially because this is typically the pathology that affects women in fertility. So next we have uh, B12 vitamins in this product. So this is really important because it improves red blood cell formation. So when talking about trying to get pregnant, this can help with overall mental health and physical health, in, uh, including energy, which affects libido, because we want you to actually still have fun when you're trying to conceive. Uh, but another thing that's important to remember it's like a whopping 33% increase of required red blood cell formation um, when pregnant. Um, so we want to support that early. Next, we have folate. So folate is really important to, to take up to three months or definitely three months before getting pregnant to uh, help with neural tube development and DNA synthesis. So um, folate um, is a hundred percent a requirement. And that's why it's in here because we want to make sure that when you're trying to conceive, if you ever do happen to conceive, you'll be, have this sufficient amount of folate to make sure that your baby is safe. So next we're going to talk about fertility support for him. 
So this is a chocolate flavored uh, beverage to help improve libido, sperm count, sperm motility, sperm morphology, which is basically the shape and stuff like that, and, de and to decrease DNA fragmentation. So first off, I'm gonna start with L-carnitine. So this is a really cool bioactive, and it's actually heavily found in the male reproductive tract. This is, um, we actually produce some of it ourselves, um, both men and women, and it improves mitochondrial function. And specifically when I'm talking about sperm, it improves energy utilization and ejaculated sperm. So this helps those swimmers actually swim as fast as they can, as far as they can, and give them the energy to keep going. Um, L-carnitine also affects sperm maturation during spermatogenesis, which is a creation of sperm because you want to have the most premium environment when you're creating your sperm because you want the best sperm to fertilize your eggs so that your baby is as healthy as it can be. So um, L-carnitine is also linked to improving sperm concentration because that's so important to trying to get pregnant. And it improves, again, sperm motility like I talked about before. It's a really cool bioactive that is super effective in affecting sperm motility. So next we have maca. So maca in general, I love just because of its um, honeycomb aromaticness of it. It smells good. It genuinely smells good. Um, and it affects libido and energy. So maca has been directly linked to improvements in libido. Um, the pathways that it does this is not quite understood, but it does affect energy. And they think that this is how it affects libido so much. Um, it improves mitochondrial function, which I should review for you guys in case you forget about high school biology, but the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's what keeps the cell going. It's the energy supplier, basically. So when you increase mitochondrial function and content in any cell, um, it will affect the energy that it has. Um, so maca is great because it, it affects your whole body, so it affects your mood, and it improves libido. So next we have green tea. Uh, so before starting this, um, I just want to review to everybody a concept. Um, so antioxidants are really important when um, thinking about fertility. That's because when your body is under stress, it might not want to reproduce. And I'll explain this really quickly. So our body is just trying to survive and we're trying to survive as a species. So you got to think like back like man caveness that way okay so when your body is just trying to survive and it feels like it's stressed out it thinks that the environment is hostile and so it's going to recognize that this is maybe not the best time that we should be bringing uh, a new one of us into the world so when your body's stressed from oxidant stress or other stressors like you being upset which causes oxidant stress or inflammation from uh, inactivity or poor diet or something like that, it's not going to put all of its energy and resources to reproduction because it wants to survive, okay? So this is also why when you get stressed out mentally or you're um, eating a poor diet that's pro-inflammatory or has a lot of oxidants in it or something like that, um, or you're putting a lot of stress in your body in multiple different ways, you tend to gain weight and fertility goes down. It's because your body is trying to survive. It's not thriving. So you want to put your body in the in a position that it's thriving. So when you take antioxidants, what that does, it, it puts it in a less stressful environment and it helps your mind and your body um, think that it's thriving and it'll improve fertility. So that's a concept to always keep in the back of your mind when thinking about fertility. Um, and that is how you also recognize stress. But this is where green tea comes in. So green tea is a powerful antioxidant that carries many essential nutrients that improve oxidant stresses. Green tea has also been linked to improving anxiety, um, which can help improve fertility. Um, also it gives you a little bit of energy. So I suggest if you're taking this product that you take it midday or early in the morning, depending on your sensitivity for caffeine. And when it comes to caffeine for men for fertility, um, you can actually go ahead, have that coffee. Um, 
one to three cups of coffee in a day is is still in a safe range. Um, there's lots of studies on it. It doesn't really necessarily improve sperm function because of the caffeine, but it doesn't decrease it either. Um, so go ahead, have those coffees, maybe have one less if you're having this because it does have green tea. Awesome. Uh, so next we're going to go into these vitamins. So again, this is a concept we're going to keep in our mind about antioxidants. Um, so first we have vitamin C. So vitamin C is actually very prevalent in seminal fluid, which is the ejaculate. Um, and it is an important ox antioxidant uh, scavenger that maintains sperm integrity in the ejaculate. So uh, another concept that I'm going to introduce to you guys that you might already know is that the vaginal canal is actually pretty hostile to sperm. Um, the pH is not favorable. Um, there's mucus. There's all these things. These sperm are actually fighting really hard. So it, vitamin C is a way to protect the sperm as they're swimming up the vaginal canal. So more of them can reach farther. And the sperm that reaches the egg, um, everything is intact. Uh, so increasing your vitamin C content can hopefully increase the amount of vitamin C in your seminal fluid, which will help allow the swimmers to swim farther safer. Also, vitamin C is really important, like we talked about before, in hormone metabolism. So next, we have selenium. So selenium has been proved to increase sperm motility and concentration, and it works well with vitamin E, which we'll go to next. So vitamin E uh, also maintains sperm integrity in the seminal fluid, along with decreasing DNA fragmentation during um, sper sper spermatogenesis. My apologies. So next we're going to zinc. Zinc it helps with prostate health and sexual maturation. Um, B vitamins enhance motility and decrease DNA damage. They also play a role with overall energy in, for him in general um, to increase his libido. And folate also has been proven to increase low sperm count and will increase sperm count when they're low and increase motility. So next we are going to the prenatal vitamin. Um, so this is an expertly engineered prenatal vitamin with a peppermint aftertaste. I like to note that I actually really love this um, prenatal vitamin. Uh, it's one of the things that I was actually really excited to work with Premama for because, I, I, of course, I really like the birth control cleanse because that's really what started me on this journey. But I think this is a great prenatal vitamin, and um, I think it will help improve the likelihood people will take it, which will really improve um, your baby's health and your health, which is important to consider. So first off, we're going to talk about omega-3s. So also in my master's, I did a lot of research on algae and omega-3. Um, my study actually was with omega-3 and concussion prevention, and I specifically did a project on algae and um, prevention of dementia. Because uh, algae has a lot of bioactives, which include a really powerful antioxidants, but it also includes a great source of DHA and EPA. So DHA and EPA are the um, more bioavailable forms of omega-3. Um, just so you know, ALA is another form of omega-3 that's usually from plant sources, but algae is a vegan source of really high DHA and EPA. It is actually the primary source of DHA and EPA in, from, for our fish. So um, people always talk about eating fish to increase your omega-3 content um, or consumption, but the place that these fish actually get it from is algae. And there's so many other things in algae that are really great for us. And the, the again, DHA and EPA content is amazing. Uh, so I love the fact that they use algae for their omega-3 source. It's very smart and it will give you your best bang for your buck. And it's amazing. Um, and the if you're wondering the importance of omega-3, it's essential for brain development. And... Um, there's lots of studies being done or have been done on women's or pregnant women's omega-3 content and um, the IQ of their children. 
And uh, because a lot of people will talk about fish consumption and the risk because of mer- mercury, which is uh, a good thing to think of. So you shouldn't have excess amount of fish higher up on the food chain. And definitely try, especially when you're pregnant, to eat fish lower down on the food chain. Um, but it's still super important. You still need to have that fish. Uh, the the bad outweigh the good with fish consumption of omega-3. But here's a great source of omega-3 with none of the mercury risk. So I'm really glad that is in here. Another great thing to point out, this is double capsulated, which is super cool so that the bioactive or active ingredients in these supplements get to where they need to in your intestinal tract so that they're most bioavailable. Um, I think I might have said this term a couple times. Bioavailable just means your body's ability to use this nutrient. So a lot of things affect bioavailability, like its chemical structure. So what else you consume things with and where it reaches down into your intestine when you have it with food or without food and stuff like that. So this makes it super easy. Um, The double capsulation makes everything go where it needs to go and makes it super bioavailable. So again, you get a better bang for your buck. Um, So another thing that we need to talk about is the essential nutrients in this vitamin. So first we have iodine. So iodine is needed for healthy brain development. The daily requirement for iodine for pregnant women is almost double the requirement for women of the same age. So this is super important to have in a vitamin, and I'm so glad of the dosage that they have in this vitamin. I think it's amazing. Um, next we're going to talk about B vitamins. I've already touched about folate, um, which is a B vitamin, uh, super important. It's essential. There's no question about it. You need folate. You need it at a good dose. There's no point of risking this at all. If you take anything when you are pregnant or becoming pregnant, it should just be folate. But all of these things are also essential. That is just the primary thing. Next is vitamin B6, biotin, vitamin B12, and riboflavin. These are all different B vitamins that help with um, cellular metabolism to keep you energized, working, happy while you're pregnant. There's no reason for you to be so freaking tired. And also improves red blood cell formation, which also affects how tired you are. Um, Like I said before, it's a whopping like 33% increase of red blood cell formation when you're pregnant and what red blood cells is they take things like oxygen and other nutrients all over your body and get them to where they need to go so you want to support this as best as possible um next we have iron the needs iron needs also greatly increase um due to its essential role for red blood cell development and it's on high demand during pregnancy. So it's really important. And also it's important to note that most women are anemic, which means they have low iron essentially. So having higher dosage um, when you're pregnant is really important because you don't have these stores. Uh, most women get like half the amount of iron that they're supposed to have in a day regularly. That's the average. So you really need to increase your iron intake. So next we have choline. This is also uh, important in brain development, and it works super well with omega-3. So that's why we have both of them in there. So next we're going to go to the question period. Um, I'm going to see if I can stop the screen share and still look at it so you guys have a face. Awesome. I'm going to take a drink of water. So the first question we have is I was on the depot shot from the time I was 13 years old until I was 20 years old. And then the next, I'm sorry, I always pronounce this wrong. Next plan in implant um, uh, from the time I was 23 years old until I was 26 year old, 26 years old, almost 27. I have been on, I have been birth control free for a year and four months. My cycles are still irregular, and I have had two hormone therapies to regulate me, and they haven't. I don't know what to do at this point. What vitamins or prenatals or cleanses do I need? So this is a really great question, and um, it's really interesting because when I was trying to do that product development class, we actually did surveys, and we had so many comments and questions similar to this. 
So just so everyone knows, a depo shot is a birth control shot that has really high levels of progesterone, which um, you have to take once every three months, essentially, depending on the person that you are. And the implant is has synthetic estrogen and progesterone, and it just goes underneath the skin. And it's, pardon me, it's slow release, um, and it lasts, I forget how long but longer and it's a similar concept to the patch it's a uh, transdermal um so uh the meta- how your body metabolizes these hormones is way more like stronger essentially than oral doses uh, people often take the patch or the implant for digestional reasons some people don't go well with oral contraceptives and the, uh, the implant lasts way longer, which is also another reason people do that. Um, but the, so the problem when you take oral contraceptives, like I said before, is the synthetic hormones disrupt your body's ability to produce its own. Because while it's on these synthetic hormones, it doesn't have to, right? So, and especially specifically talking about this individual, she started at a very young age. And at that age, um, some women don't even have their period yet. And you definitely haven't had it developed completely, um, which is a concept that not everyone is aware of. Your menstrual cycle is always changing and it takes a long time to develop so that it works properly. Um, And another concept to remind people of, even if you're not having your period, you have your period, but you have really bad PMS or other things like that, that's normal, that's 100% normal, but that's not what's supposed to happen. It's your body telling you that there's something wrong, okay? So when talking about this individual, first off, um, I would say, honestly, I totally support the birth control cleanse that pre-mama has. If you find that's not necessarily working for you, you can also add a supplement called DIM, D-I-M, all capital. Also, it's actually another inositol, very different than myo-inositol, but it helps estrogen metabolism, actually. So I would suggest trying the cleanse and DIM um, and see how that works for you. DIM is really great. For anyone dealing with PMS, I would primarily start with taking DIM because what DIM does it helps with healthy estrogen metabolism. So it doesn't increase or decrease your metabolism of estrogen. It just affects which estrogen your body is primarily using. So there's different types of estrogen. There's actually three main pathways that I'll talk about. One's pro-inflammatory, one's proliferative, which means uh, like uh, increase. And um, there's anti-inflammatory. So what DIM does is help increase estrogen metabolism to the anti-inflammatory pathway. Because we all produce estrogen, we just want to make sure it's the the lovable, favorable estrogen, okay? So I would suggest you take DIM and the birth control cleanse. I'd also suggest that you um, look at what type of exercise you're doing or exercise at all. So exercise in general, when you're trying to balance your hormones is essential. Okay. Um, and I love endurance exercise for women. First off, I want to state always also do weightlifting. Like girls are supposed to be muscular and strong, get it girl. But, and, um, when you do low impact and long like for a long period of time it really affects your estrogen production and it could really help so take up things like maybe swimming or do a walks try to do whatever for a stable amount of time for an hour um so whatever you can start doing that with do that i think it will really help and also increase your fiber intake and decrease the amount of stress um, and make sure this is key because a lot of people are going on keto diets and stuff like that. Um, so fats or like some people go fat free diet. Some people are doing whatever. Make sure that you're getting all three macronutrients, which is carbs, fat and protein in the recommended amount um, because for uh, uh, your hormones are made from cholesterol, which is from fat. Uh, so you need to have fat. And other things 
that help. If you don't have enough carbs, you lose your period. So make sure that you have that. All of them are essential in hormone production and metabolism and overall health. And if your body's not getting all three at the way that it needs, it's going to think that um, it's in survival mode and it's going to shut off those reproductive functions, including your period, Um, which goes back to stress. If you're stressed, please. Um, Find a way. I know it's so hard to try to decrease the amount of stress that you're having because um, especially if you're stressed out in your luteal phase, which is after ovulation, it really affects your progesterone and estrogen production because um, you have to make cortisol. So really try uh, to find a way to relax. Pick up. Exercise is a right, great way to deal with stress. It may take a while adjustment to get used to it, but once you do, it's amazing. And endurance training, like running, walking, or whatever, is the best mindless thing to do. You can just do it. You don't have to think, or you can process everything that happened in the day. Try to pick up meditation. There's so many things. Try to do that. Um, but yes, so that's my advice for her. So next question we have, can you combine taking fertility for her and birth control cleanse and prenatal? Or just out of all of the products, which can you take together? Is there anything you can't take together? Okay, you can totally take all those together. Um, I do suggest that if you, I would primarily suggest starting off with birth control cleanse and fertility for her before adding the prenatal in because there might be an overlap of like B vitamins. You're going to get a lot of those, which is already, if you eat meat and stuff like that, it's pretty prevalent in your diet so you're gonna have a it's a water soluble vitamin it will go out in your pee but um maybe just cut down on that but other than that um you can totally take them all together um but there's none looking over all the products and stuff there's none that i say that you can't take together um so go ahead and go for it um so the next question we have is do any of the products help rebalance progesterone, especially if they have low progesterone? So um, low progesterone is very common um, and is an essential cause for infertility. And so the birth control cleanse actually really does help uh, with this. We talked about this earlier. It really helps increase progesterone in the luteal phase. So yeah, take the birth control cleanse. I really suggest that if you're having trouble getting pregnant, take it. I think it could really help. Um, And I also suggest that you take the birth control uh, cleanse for longer than a month, Um, especially if coming off birth control. I do suggest taking it for three months. I should have said this earlier. Um, People typically coming off their uh, birth control can regain their period, but it's not a good quality period and your endometrial lining um, doesn't sustain properly typically for like at least three months after it totally can some people adjust but it's still not like a premium period and um, even if you are adjusting well in my opinion um, and I wouldn't try getting pregnant until three months after um, coming off birth control just for the safety of my child um, it increases miscarriage rate three months after Um, So to be on the safe side, just so that you don't have to deal with that, because who wants to deal with that? Um, I would wait three months and I would definitely try taking this for three months before I um, give up on it. And um, some people need to be on it for way longer. That's totally normal. Some people don't regulate for a year taking supplements and stuff like that. It's a very complicated system. Um, So be patient. I know that's hard, but you have to be patient. Um. So the next question is, what is the best to start taking fertility for her? First day of cycle or whenever. So honestly, you can take fertility for her, start taking it whenever. You don't have to wait for a specific time. Um, The ingredients in that actually don't rely on that at all. So go ahead, start taking it whatever, in my opinion. Um, Yeah. And if you, next question, if you skip a day taking fertility for her, do you take two the next day or just continue with one day? A hundred percent, don't take two in one day. Um, That's kind of a waste of your money. Take one a day. If you miss one, that's totally fine. Um, 
if you miss two, that's totally fine too. Just like take one a day. That's all you need to do. If it's, it, um, don't take two a day. <laughs> um, if you conceive, next question, if you conceive, do you stop taking fertility for her immediately? Um, so honestly, you don't have to. So myo and Osotol has actually been used during people's pregnancy and um, postnatal to help with gestational diabetes, which, so when you're pregnant, you basically develop diabetes. That's how it works, uh, just because of the baby and all that kind of stuff. So some people uh, have been tested of taking it during pregnancy and it helps with gestational diabetes. I specifically would just like be so careful. Um, in my opinion, I'd rather play it safe. I would maybe take it actually after. I would. I do highly suggest it as a postnatal thing. Um, it could really help and with your recovery and stuff like that. And um, yeah, because there's all this stuff about after and developing diabetes after pregnancy is a little bit of a risk. So I would totally suggest taking this postnatal, 100%. Um, but that's all I have for everybody. Thank you.